Come on in and welcome to my kitchen. In our last video, we did learn how to make Nigerian pop forth. In today's video, I will simply be showing you how to make Nigerian pops. Yes, they are like related to each other. The Nigerian pop forth and the Nigerian buns. They both look alike in terms of the shape. They both share some common ingredients. Like for instance, you need the all-purpose flour for each of them. You need the nutmeg. However, there are some differences. For instance, the leavening agent that you use for the Nigerian buns is totally different from the leavening agent that you use for your puff puff. For Nigerian buns, you use the baking powder. However, for Nigerian puff puff, you use the yeast. And there are some other differences that comes with these particular recipes, ranging from how you mix them, the, the thickness of the batter that you have, Whereas the Nigerian puff puff to me is a thick batter, whereas for Nigerian buns it's rather a soft dough. But don't worry, don't let me give off all the information before we start this video recipe. So I'll be sharing with you the differences with them and how you're going to achieve Nigerian buns that is crusty on the outside yet dense and chewy on the inside. So, without speaking too much, let's head onto the work table and start cooking. But if you're yet to subscribe to my channel and you like what you see and you enjoy this model of teaching, rightly click on the subscribe button and ring that notification bell beside it. So, let's get to it. On the ingredient list, we have all-purpose flour, grated fresh nutmeg, Salt, baking powder, sugar, melted butter, pure vanilla extract, which is optional, eggs, and water. In no particular order, Add into the bowl all the dry ingredients. Then mix all together for even distribution. Kitchen tip. If you are undecided on amount of sugar, add sugar bit by bit. Take a pinch of the mix and taste till you get your desired taste level. Once satisfied with your mix, set this aside. Go ahead and combine your wet ingredients in another bowl as shown. The reason I like combining wet away from dry ingredients is to achieve a thorough mix of ingredients before they come together to form the final dough. Now it's time for us to make our dough. I like to take out some of the dry ingredients as shown and use this as I go to thicken the dough as I want. This helps to take out the guesswork for me as regards to how much liquid or flour to use. Pour into the dry ingredients the wet ingredients and start combining as shown to develop the gluten for structure and to get to the consistency you are needing. Once the dry is wet, Add in more of the dry to thicken it. Keep doing this at interval till you achieve the consistency that you want. The consistency we are looking for is wet, stretchy, sticky, soft dough. We do not want a runny batter as shown. So keep adding flour to thicken it. My trick is to just mix to wet the dry ingredients and then thicken it, not to over mix at the beginning.
once it has thickened, I then need or mix this mixture to get the gluten formed into this stretchy, wet, sticky dough as shown. Also, I like to show you a difference between buns and puff puff. The buns is a soft, wet, sticky dough, while puff puff is a thick drop batter as shown. Once my dough consistency is achieved, I cover it with a clean towel and allow it to rest to relax the gluten that is formed and then create my oil. Let's fry this dough people. Wet your hand to minimize the dough from sticking onto your end as you form and drop it into the created oil as shown. A candy thermometer can take out your guesswork if you have it to know the if your oil has been preheated pre -eated well. Or you can do a test drop with just one. But again, with practice, you know how long it takes for your stovetop to eat up your oil to medium high heat level. At first, it will stay at the bottom, but it will rise up to the top later on as it lightens up. Once I put all into the oil, I reduce the heat level to medium level so that it will fry thoroughly and true before it starts browning for about 5 to 8 minutes depending on the level of your heat. It takes a longer time for buns to fry unlike puff puff and it doesn't soak in a lot of oil. Ensure to turn at interval for even browning as shown. A little crack on the bones is expected, but if it is like this, it may mean you did not get a tight seal when you shaped your dough and dropped it into the water. Thus, as it rises during frying, it escaped this weak zone. So next time that you're making it, make sure you fold the dough multiple times as shown. And while dropping the dough into the oil, ensure to pinch your hand tight together when releasing it to seal it off. Once you have achieved your desired round color, place this into the sieve and let it cool. In the next few slides, I will show you some more differences between buns and puff puff. The exterior of buns is crusty while puff puff is tender. The interior of buns is chewy and relatively dense but yet tender while puff puff has chewy and relatively fluffy interior. I hope I have been able to pass on some knowledge I have found about Nigerian bonds. If you are new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell for instant updates. And to my oldie, thanks for stopping by. Until next time, when I see you again, let's learn and cook together. Bye bye!